Hi, my name's Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. If you recall, in an earlier video, we were looking at this GPS navigator. <clears throat> I've since played with it. I'm quite pleased with it. I have noticed, however, that its uh, reception can be a little sketchy in one of my vehicles, and that is a shame because it doesn't have an external antenna option. So I was just curious to see if there's any possibility of getting in there. Step one. And step two, just seeing what makes this tick. Because we do know it is a Windows ah, CE device. But what kind of processor does a Windows CE device use? So I'm being a bit ginger. Just working my fingers around the bezel. Because you saw there, <clears throat> I did put a little bit of a scratch on it. But uh, luckily I'm immune to such concerns. As long as the scratch isn't on the screen, I'm generally okay. Ooh, there was a screw. <laughs> so what I've basically done is pop the screw out of the corner. Yeah, check for screws first. That should probably be stage one in any discombobulation manual. Okay, so that's one screw out and thrown across the desk. And this seems like the perfect job for one of those stacking parts trays we covered in an earlier video. Okay, so I will have to probably find that one that popped out. It does look like the hole though that it popped out from is still reasonably intact. So as long as I can get the original screw or something similar, that should be okay. Right, let's do the bezel pinching again. Right, getting in there. Yeah, that seems to be a lot more happy <laughs> to come apart. And uh, another interesting thing, by the way, I found it has a stylus in it for the screen. And there's actually a blank in this one. So you can put the stylus in the top or the side as you wish, and then move that blank across. Mm, okay, right, got to be a bit cautious now. You can see there's a ribbon holding the screen to the main board. So we're going to flip it over this direction. Yeah, that's okay. Look at that, not much in it at all. I mean, that's mainly screen, and because it's got that resistive, I think, touch screen on there. Oh my word. Look at this, how? How? And the battery's quite small, so that's why it doesn't last particularly long. I like even the power switch, it's got this really long arm going to the actual tax which it's connected to. I'm not going to switch it right now. But indeed though you do have an SD card and there was this port on the outside that says AV and you can see on here that it actually does have the footprints for that jack. But it's all looking a bit grubby to be honest with you. So I'm going to just gingerly start, oops, well, I was going to unpeel that but it wants to disconnect itself some of this tape so I can get to the ribbon connectors so we can actually remove the screen. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so there is the first ribbon. In fact, if I can just get my nails in there, which I can, just get that out of the way. And now there's a tiny bit of capped on tape here. Let's remove that. I'll put it over here out of the way on this battery so we can use it again later. Interestingly you can see where the stylus lives now and that's the stylus channel right in there. So yeah, you could actually definitely take the stylus out and put it into that top one. It doesn't look like it's quite long enough. Maybe you'd need a telescopic <laughs> stylus in that one. So it seems that a lot of what we are interested in is contained not only on this board, but under these metal cans. So now's a good time if you're doing this generally is to take a photograph. So I've got my phone here. I'm just going to do that. I don't normally, I'm a bit more blasé, but I do actually quite like this. So I don't want to break it. I do want it working. We spent real money on this. Let's get that capped on tape moved. So you can see you have the positive and negative from the battery and then the positive and negative from the speaker. But interestingly, there's a whole bunch of additional little pins there that we'll have a look under the microscope later to see if we can identify. And just before we start desoldering anything, let's get those last few screws out. So 
so that we can see what we're dealing with. And we might as well remove that last bit of capton while we're here. I mean, looking at the state of this board, I might even chuck it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner later because it's filthy. They clearly didn't, but I'm guessing that's what you get when you have budget electronics, really. They have to skip a few of these stages. And look at that, that was what was on that button keeping it in. It's amazing, really. It's, it's like almost homemade. Look, there's your, it's rusty even. Look at that. <laughs> rusty, my word. Okay. So I'm wondering if that's because when they made the board, they put it through some parts washer and didn't let it dry properly. Could be the reason. Right, well, there's the antenna. At least we've got somewhere with that. But yeah, totally, Kate. There is a date code on here, 2016. And it says 128 megabytes dash 86 dash FM. And there is an antenna here. That must be the FM antenna. There's a little FM antenna there, right there. In fact, I'll zoom in so you might have a chance of seeing it. You can see it right there. That's super interesting, it really is. And actually, here's some serial pins right here, so you probably get to access to a debug port if you wanted to try that. And let's see, is there anything here on this side in terms of markings? There's definitely some markings there, though. Not quite distinct. Right, let's just get to the soldering iron and remove these here. And you've got to be careful. We've got to make sure that the bits we take off don't short. So I'm going to grab a bit of insulation tape that I keep just for this purpose. And I'm going to take off one of the connections, like that. I like how I took it off and instantly it's trying to short something. Right. I'm going to put that bit of tape on it so it's out of the way. It's out of sight. Now we're a little bit safer. The speaker wires don't really matter what polarity they're in. So we can remove that now have the board. Now it would be interesting to see if any of these metal plates come off. I mean, generally speaking they do, but occasionally you'll find that they have been soldered down. So let's not, oh, let's not be too disappointed if we can't get them off, I was going to say, but it looks like we are managing. So that's going to be quite tricky to see what's in there. Let's see if there's anything under there we can identify. A lot of the old chipsets, though, they used to use these MediaTek things, and I think Windows CE definitely ran on ARM. Look, there's the memory. An interesting look, another ribbon cable in there. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be a bit of flash. But I'll read it out. 29F64G08CBAAA. Is that a bit of NAND? Let's pop this guy off. Ooh. It's so weird. It's like we're taking these covers off, but there's nothing really particularly interesting underneath. Just some resistors or whatever, but they must be of real issues with RF. Maybe that's why the signal is so weak that we've tried to shield absolutely everything on this board on the off chance that it's just putting enough noise out there to increase the ceiling to the point that they're not getting any GPS. So this lid is st starting to misbehave a little bit. There is a little bit of rust on it. Okay. So you've got a 5 volts pin here as well as your TX and RX. Ah, it is an arm, and you can see it right there. There's your arm. I suspect this could be our another memory. Let's see what that says. Looks like it says D93 
It looks like an ampersand B. 50117? Hmm. Well, and the other number is PE009. Very strange. Is that all there is to it? You basically just got your regular capacitors and resistors going on, you know, around your chip here, and a bit of an inductor. Your USB stage here. It'd be interesting if you could replace the USB port if you wanted to, but I find that these are quite hardy. The original USB micro are pretty hardy things. What would be interesting to me though is about this antenna. And you can see there's a blob there. Is that the centre feed of the antenna? I'm, not, I'm tempted, I'm tempted to put a bit of heat on it. See what happens. So there, it seems there is a pin there. <laughs> I did a bit of a push as I applied heat to see what would happen, but nothing much did. And it seems that either through moisture or whatever it is, this, this has lost all of its markings. So let's see. Oh, oh, hello, hello, hello. There we go. So it does say something on there. I'm just, I'm just cleaning up as I go along. Right, M3655-V2. But are these modules? That could be an entire GPS module on a BGA for all I know. So I've got to be a bit careful. I don't think I should just be messing around with a soldering iron like I am. I'm just going to touch that back up. Let's have a quick look on the old phone and see if it reveals anything about this. It's so weird. I was on the internet putting this number. If you go Google right now, M3655-V2.0, you'll find these boards available on Alibaba for anywhere between £20 and £30. And they just basically are sold as truck GPS um, module boards. And the bit that I think bizarre on them, of course, depending on what you, you spend, by the way, you'll get different features. And you can see there are footprints here for these other features that are missing. Um, I wonder if these are out of a different type of GPS unit, you know, like a regular one, like a small one with a screen. You know, because that looks like the form factor you'd have, right? Not these bigger, you know, seven inch screens, but like the original, like four inch GPS, like a TomTom -tom or something. Yeah, just weird, um, very weird. Anyway, I digress. Um, these modules, I couldn't find anything about them, but I could see on the internet that, oh, it's so dodgy, that um, these do look a lot like just the antenna part. Um, and that may be the case. I'm just, I have no idea if there's any way to tell <laughs> before we just destroy this potentially. Um, I don't see any tracking around here. We'll try to apply a bit of heat because it did look like they're, uh, as antennas, they did have this centre pin and I should, could probably put hot air on the thing really. I think it's just adhesive. That's definitely got an adhesive vibe to it. Oh, okay. So now it's cleaned up, you can see that indeed it is just an antenna and this will be, I think it's about 1.5 gigahertz. You don't quote me, don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, look, you can look it up to what GPS frequency is on. You can see underneath there, there is just a couple of pads and a little center pin where this was soldered through. It would be interesting to see if these pads are connected. So I'm gonna put the, so those pads are connected together and then you've got that hole in the middle which we're going to have to poke through from the other side. Weirdly enough though, hmm, yeah, I was going to say weirdly enough um, you can see there's just a very the finest of trace actually in there that takes that signal from there in. It's just so tiny, it's almost imperceivable. And I don't even think that the hole is through plate. It's not a through plate via. Crazy. Anyway, the reason it's so interesting to me is that I do happen to have 
one of these things. And that is a tiny micro coax jobby. And technically, if we could solder it there and then get a feed to that centre pin down there, we would be able to use something that terminates in one of these. And you've seen them in your monitors and gadgets and devices. And this one is a antenna. It's an antenna for, I think, 2.4 gigahertz. So I don't think it's going to work, but we could try it for fun. We could just plug this in, assemble everything back up and have this wire out the end. And then we could always chop this and fit that anyway. But it'd be a bit of fun just to see if we get anything of that. So I'm going to try to solder this down. And I think I'm just going to do it old school styly with just regular solder. So I'm going to get my very fine solder. I've got, oh, it's all wrapped up. It's a very fine solder, like uh, the same sort of wire. Yeah, you know, the solder that you'd, the the wire you'd use to wrap an old RF radio kit as a kid. So we did get contact conductivity on these things. They don't look like pads to me. In fact, I, they just look like plain PCB material. Hmm. So we've got a couple of dabs going on, just a couple of the wires, basically. But now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it doesn't matter. Because if this is all effectively ground plane, you could just scrape off a bit anywhere. But we do have a nice couple of little blobs building now. So we can make use of those. Let's get rid of that. So now I'm taking a lot of care because only one of these is the actual center pin and it is the, oh, it's the shorter one. So this is the way round this has to go. So I'm just going to see if there's any possibility that I can place this by hand. Otherwise, I think we're going to need the old hot air. But it's worth a shot. It did settle a little bit then. Go around this side, just again a little bit of pressure on the top. So I guess you're asking, Andrew, does this change your opinion of this £35 device that you are touting as being the miracle GPS um, in your previous video? And I'll say, no, I still think it's bloody great. So. <laughs> Um, even though I've discovered it's quite a cheap board, um, but it's not even that cheap because we were saying basically on Alibaba it was like 25 to 35 pounds. I mean, we pay less for the whole device. So I'm just heating it till it sags. I think that's about it. I don't think it's going to get any prettier. Let's give it a clean. So we sort of had quite an old date code on it, which is also quite interesting because, um, let's just check these by the way. Yep, yep, yep. We probably should be able to get, if I could find what is a ground. Yes. Center pin, nothing, which is what you, Want. So we're ready to go. Um, yeah, I mean these are nearly 10 year old uh, technologies right on this thing But this could have been quite a good unit. I think 10 years ago. It's quite fast nippy does its stuff It probably explains its lack of connectivity because no manufacturer these days would dare Release a product that they couldn't control over the internet and upsell you stuff Right, so I'm gonna hold this bit of wire which I appreciate you might not be able to see but there it is there's the bit of wire you can see it's just sticking out that hole I'm trying to keep it quite vertical but it's not too critical and then I'm going to just hit it with a bit of solder like so 
and that should have the effect of captivating it and it has and you can see on the other side there's a little nubbin sticking up so I'm just going to gently oh I bent it and it ripped the pad off that is like literally the worst thing that could have happened okay I've been playing with this off uh, line as it were but you can see here now I've got a very tiny bit of kynar that comes through the hole and goes to that component because that was following the original trace. I do have our new socket connected and you can see that little blob there. That should be the input into that chip. So I'm going to check now here with our continuity tester one more time to see if it actually is going where we want it to go. Yes, it is. Good. Phew. Now, that was a bit fraught, to be honest. Let's put that aside because I need something a little bit more relaxing to do. Let's dismantle this Wi-Fi antenna. I'm a bit curious to see what's in there. So I want to extract the wire from this anyway. Okay, so we have a little metal can. Directing this sleeve. I wonder if this is what is in a, one of those little sticky out aerials. You know when you get a little aerial on your router? I'm guessing this is probably the common part. They probably all have this. And if I've got a guess, it will be a piece of wire like two and a bit centimetres. <laughs> it is. So yeah, that's the actual antenna part of that. And then this is like your ground plane. So we should be able to pull this out. Although... It's well fixed on the end. Is it actually soldered? Let's see. Yes, it is. Look, get rid of that. So we can bin all of those. So what we want to do in this antenna is basically solder that to that. So that would work. So I'm going to just pull a bit of this off. Making a judge. Oh, okay. That cut instantly. So that was a bit dodgy very gentle <laughs> let's get a little bit of solder on the old tip yeah that looks good and then you could solder it something like that which looks nice we can push down so I'm pressing down to Chinatown let's get that going and that wouldn't go anywhere although I think it would be more aesthetically pleasing to have a blob on each side. Double the trouble. There. So again, just as a sanity check, got the continuity meter. And we're going to just check this does not touch this. And they don't. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So then the final bit would be to attach this to this. Which I'm not going to do quite yet until I just go back through the steps to reassemble this because I just want to make sure I don't miss anything out. So bear with me. Okay, we are back together, uh, more or less. Just have to attach the screen. But if you remember, there was some foily stuff I did damage, and I feel obligated, even though it probably wasn't doing anything, to replace it. So I do have my copper tape here, which is made of actual copper. And I shall use that. But first, let me cover the battery connections. Oops, actually, <laughs> I was a bit too over the top there because I'm covering those ports we're going to need to get to. So let's pop that in like that. And again, copper tape. If you can get the backing paper off. It's always the same with these things. The worst one is exhibition carpet tape. Right, here we go. So we're going to add bit from the battery over there for some reason it's <laughs> just that's what they were doing I don't know why um, belt and braces really why don't we just add a bit across here too nice there I feel that we've done our bit for the copper tape industry now let's pop this open we need to get our screen connected in. And these are going to be Mucho Trouble-o, as they say in a place. 
I think it might be easier to get this one. I mean, the first, this is the digitizer, I'm sure, and then this is the actual display screen. Hmm. I think if I can get it in, oh no, what's all these tapes touching all over? <laughs> if I can get it in, I'll be able to flip it over. So maybe I'll get it in this way first. So it's very unwieldy, basically. It's quite heavy and doesn't really want to cooperate. So you've got to do your, do your best with your tweezers. If you don't have tweezers, please don't start a project like this. It really goes downhill fast if you don't. Right, that's the screen in. So we can put this tape over there. And then I can fold it over and then just get about in and pop that in. And with a bit of luck, it will just work. We can go on our merry way. Again, many a project fails at this point where something relatively seemingly minor goes wrong, but you've blown up the whole lot. Or even worse, you've damaged the connector. Right, so uh, I'm not even going to check, but that's it. Right, we flipped it over. Got this bit left that I forgot to put somewhere. Um, put it on that there. Right. <laughs> Push the power button. Ah, oh, it's booting up. Well, that's a good sign, isn't it? We have three screws left plus one lost screw that's over here somewhere. I'll have a little look while it's booting. You can see it's going into the GPS software. Nice. I feel like I probably have to go and take it into the garden though to just do a sanity check if we don't see anything happening. Um, it's showing one bar of GPS. Well, that's probably realistic. Now, where did we go to before? So, settings. Sounds super loud. I don't know if that's because the lid's cracked on it. I think the best way to do it though is to exit this. Oh yeah, by the way, the touch screen obviously works. <laughs> go to, oh, not that, not unit convert. I want to go to GPS info, here you go. Right, so you can see there's nothing there, but I'm gonna just go out into the garden and see if we can pick up anything here. Well, look, you can see it, it's doing something. So, it still reports accuracy none for some reason, but you can see it does have these satellite things that are coming up, and this bar was absolutely full when I was outside. Um, if I touch it, let's see what happens. Can we kill it? Ah, but that's good, right? That shows when we're like touching the antenna, we're attenuating the signal. But if I let go, let's see if it picks them up. Oh, we're back to two now. Oh, three. And there is a lot of um, noise here, actually. The uh, lights as part of the uh, back of his setup actually do generate noise that you can quite often hear on um, microphones on devices. So, I don't know. I don't know what I've achieved here. Um, I think unless I can get a longer one of those wires, um, I really haven't proved anything because you can't mount it in a vehicle with just this tiny little wire. But it does seem uh, that it does do something. So. Again, if I touch this center pin, which I think we decided was something to do with it. Yeah, oh, it went down. And then of course, if I actually shorted these two out, which I don't know if you should, it's often bad to do that sort of thing. Um, you should probably be able to get rid of the signal altogether. Though there is one bar showing. Mm. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, uh, I don't know what you want to do. It was interesting tearing this down. <laughs> your mileage might vary from the antenna mod if i've done the antenna mod stupid please down below write down below and let me know um maybe you don't attach the ground plane part at all now isn't that a thing isn't that a thing should we just try that because we can try that right now can't we and it's very easy to try let's move that because we know that this antenna didn't actually have that connected to anything so i'm gonna Take that off. So now we only have the middle bit connected. 
Um, although, of course, the ground goes all the way up. Uh, it doesn't seem to have made it any worse, right? So I'm just going to cover up my latitude and longitude, but you can see it is actually receiving satellites now, and this is indoors. So, yeah, I think this little mod does actually work. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that the ground plane thing that we discussed does anything, so I've left it off. Um, I'm just shorting it now just to see if there's anything we can see, if it helps or not. Doesn't seem to be much in it either way, does there, really? If I take my hand away from it... Well, oh, yeah, mate, roop, roop, who knows? <laughs> Basically, when you're dealing with GPS, you're, you're listening to the faintest whisper of a signal. I mean, it's so um, insane. If you've got an SDR at home, just tune it in to the frequency of a GPS and just look what you see. You'll just see hardly anything, just noise. But there you go. That's where we are with this mod. Do you think it worked? Is it crap? Did I just waste a lot of my time? Answers down below. Thank you for watching. Have a great week. Bye-bye. A last little update for you. Um, I just went for a drive with this in the offending vehicle and it was crap for most of it, right? But then after a while, it did get a signal. The time changed on the unit and everything started to work out. I wonder if it was doing that bit where they warm up, where they don't know where they are. So they have to start looking you know, they just start speculatively looking at signals, trying to work out which part of the country they are, they are in or the world they're in, um, and then it bursts into life, because after that it was fine. So maybe this actually has made the difference. So there you go, vindicated.